Good evening. It's, um, it is my honor to welcome you here to Baptist Health for this event tonight. We are honored to host this event and to be a part of supporting uh, the Institute and the ongoing work of the Institute. And I, uh, as a way of introduction and, and why this is important to me personally, and, and I know to Ted we were just talking about this, I have in my hand the authoritative text on the history of Baptist Health in Kentucky and now Southern Indiana, uh, written by Walter Jackson. Uh, his uh, Ph.D. dissertation in 1968. So this is the history of Baptist Health in Kentucky from 19, actually pre-1924 with some of the planning and organizing and fundraising up and its establishment in 1924 and then up through 1968. I thought you might find interesting, and another reason why this is important that we are here in this space tonight, is that... Um, the very first religious worker in Baptist Health in 1927, local pastors provided pastoral care in the hospital as you would expect that they would, but the hospital made a decision in 1927 to employ a religious worker, a hospital missionary. <laughs> Does anybody know who that first hospital missionary was? No, it was a woman. It was Sally Priest. Yeah. Sally was a missionary to China, uh, was back here, was a part of helping to establish the uh, Kentucky Baptist School of Nursing on the campus of, of the hospital in Highlands, the first hospital. And Sally was employed um, and the WMU was engaged in providing hospital ministry and what they called at first a hospital, a, a hospital hostess. Um, but then Sally was actually employed by the hospital in 1927, and she served for the next 12 years until her death. She served in some capacity of ministry, uh, and they said that her health began to take a turn when she took on other roles, including housekeeping. <laughs> Um, and so she continued to work. But now it was, uh, now it was many years later, in 1945, and they continued with this missionary type position for many years after that. So often it, were, it was women associated with the WMU who were the hospital hostesses and provided spiritual care along with the pastors in the, in the community. Okay? 1945, May. Wayne E. Oates, graduate student at Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, became the first hospital pastor on September 1st. Yeah. Now, you all know Wayne had a tendency to move around a bit, uh, kind of bounce back and forth some things. Wayne only lasted here a year um, because he was offered a, a faculty position at Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. So Wayne was the first hospital pastor employed by Baptist Health, um, which was our first hospital in Kentucky. And, in, uh, and then a year later, 1946, he accepted a faculty position at Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. But apart from that history, and then James, uh, James Lynn Elder became the chaplain following, um, following Wayne. That began a long, long history of, of uh, pastoral ministry and pastoral counseling uh, in uh, Baptist Health as Baptist Health continued to grow and to expand. Uh, Baptist Health has trained many folks through their clinical pastoral education programs. At one time housed the Pastoral Counseling Center um, down in the, uh, for a while when I was associated uh, with it, uh, not as a counselor, but as, as somebody needing therapy, um, <laughs> when I was in seminary, was actually in the, actually housed in the School of Nursing for a while in some of those offices. Um, but, but a lot of folks have been uh, trained, educated, ministered to, and have been a part of ministry to uh, folks uh, through the Baptist system. And much of that began right here and began with that relationship with, uh, in, in, a, in a professional ministry role uh, with Wayne Oates uh, in 1945. So we are, we are especially pleased to be a part of this event tonight to celebrate the good work that um, Wayne um, uh, planted some seed for many, many years ago and continued through his work at Southern Seminary 
uh, and University of Louisville uh, School of Psychiatry, or Department of Psychiatry, the, the kind of work that he has done to advance pastoral care, pastoral counseling, the integrated relationship between spiritual issues and mental health, and, and on and on we could go with that kind of influence. And so we are glad that you're here, and tonight we celebrate um, other folks who've continued that tradition of excellence, of education, of ministry and service, and, and we, are, we are happy for that. So we'll have a blessing, then we'll eat. When we, this is a buffet, uh, we will start here since um, Molly's not here. Uh, so we'll, we'll start here at this table as our first table for the, uh, with one of our honorees. But then we'll just kind of work. You all are gracious people, and I know you will. You will. <laughs> or should I give you an order? Let's start back after this table. Let's start back there in the corner and just work our way around uh, as we go through the buffet line. If you have requested, if you've requested a vegetarian dinner. Uh, please see our hostess right back here, and she will be able to get that for you, and uh, we're all set. Would you bow with me for prayer? Oh God, for this night of celebration and memory, we give you thanks. We pray your blessings upon this time that may enrich our spirits and challenge us to new work in new days ahead. We pray your blessings on this food that it may nourish our bodies for your service. And that in all things, we may continue to honor and in memory of your gracious plenty as you bless us, as you sustain us, and as you move us to service. Amen. Uh, a couple of years ago, we began a uh, caring presence program for laypersons. And uh, it's had a slow start because it's hard to to get the word around about it and how it works. It's all online. Uh, and this past year, we've had uh, a church in uh, New Albany participate, and we have their pastor here tonight and one of the recipients, uh, one of the spiritual caregivers out of that group. I think there's eight or 10 of them that have taken one module or another. Uh, some of them are on their fourth module out of six to be certified or at least to be that uh, to, to certify that they've taken all six of the modules to train them to be better caregivers in their congregation so uh, i'd like for pastor allen and and robert to come up if you will <coughs> and uh, rusty you're on that committee would you mind coming up and handing them their award uh, dr hoffman's involved on the committee uh, to uh, develop this program and uh, we are delighted to have you all representing uh, your church uh, would you like to come pastor Allen and say a word I can. okay <laughs> <laughs> he is he has that. tweeted us out <laughs> so I'm your big Twitter fan That's he true. is our tweeter fan <laughs> so I'm gonna invite him to say just a word um, my just short uh, comment on this program is I'm a solo pastor of a church of about 100 members, so I wear many hats. And one of the things that can happen is that can put a lot of strain on one pastor to do all the pastoral care, and also members can slip through the cracks. So this program that you all offer is perfect for churches our size to get lay people trained to do grief care and crisis care, and they really help a pastor out, but they also help their church out a lot too. And we've already got six of our participants paired with people that they're forming relationships with. So thank you for offering this program on behalf of our church, but hopefully other churches like us down the road. Thank you. And toward the back of your program, uh, actually on the last uh, two pa second from the last page, you'll see a description of that program. And if your uh, organization, it doesn't have to be a congregation or church or uh, temple or parish, but uh, if they might be interested in finding out more, then we'd love to talk with them about that. Okay, Susan. Uh, I want to bring up next Rabbi Nadia Saritsky. Vice President of Mission, Kentucky One and Jewish Hospital. She'll present this year's award for the outstanding longtime service to spiritual caregiver.
It is my profound honor to work with Chaplain Catherine Lush and to introduce you to her tonight. She is super humble and does not want me to wax poetic, which I sometimes do in general, but certainly could do for her. Her compassion, grace, skill, dedication, insight, and authenticity are a source of inspiration to everyone who has the opportunity to meet her and witness her exceptional ministry. Kathy has been a chaplain at Jewish Hospital and Fraser Rehab Institute since November 2003. Last year, she was recognized with our hospital's Employee of the Year Award. Her ability to juggle multiple responsibilities with grace, compassion, and skill is truly exceptional, and I have rarely met a chaplain more gifted. When I arrived, she was the only full-time chaplain serving at Jewish Hospital. We have been able to grow our department, but she is our lead and our inspiration. Our hospital is profoundly blessed by her ministry and her leadership as she has evolved into our lead chaplain in training new hires and coordinating volunteers and countless other responsibilities. That being said, her staff care is especially exceptional. And over the last two and a half years, as Jewish Hospital has been for sale, staff have been waiting and dwelling in the unknown. Kathy's ability to provide support and spiritual guidance along with our amazing department for our team of caregivers has been especially appreciated. And actually, our staff satisfaction numbers have gone up in the last two years. In addition to all that she does at Jewish Hospital in Fraser, Kathy is also a Catholic lay minister and has received board certification as a professional chaplain through the National Association of Catholic Chaplains. Chaplaincy is a second career for Kathy, a calling that was birthed out of her personal experience for caring for both of her parents through terminal illness and the desire to bridge gaps to provide holistic patient-centered care from curative treatment to comfort care. She returned to school to earn a Bachelor of Science degree in Christian Social Ministries from Campbellsville University and a Master's of Arts of Spirituality from Bellarmine. She trained as a CP intern, then a resident chaplain at Norton Healthcare, and she has always been involved within her church, serving on various committees within parishes and receiving training through the Archdiocese of Louisville Ministry Formation Program and Spiritual Direction Practicum prior to chaplaincy training. Before entering chaplaincy, she had an accomplished career in information systems technology, and I can assure you that we are all profoundly grateful for her IT skill and te technique, which is rare to have both as a chaplain, but she is. So it is therefore my honor to welcome Kathy tonight and to have the opportunity to celebrate her amongst all of you and to recognize her. I have a small token of appreciation for her on behalf of Jewish Hospital that I also want to present to her tonight as we join together with the Oates community, thank you, Rick, to recognize her exceptional ministry and years of dedicated service. Please join me in welcoming. A word or two. Well, thank you. Thank you for the kind words. And um, I simply have been trying to live out and be faithful to God's call. I give thanks to my God connection, uh, Mary Burks, who had a little faith in me and the Norton community and all my teachers and mentors that are in this room. And it's a great privilege to serve and be at Jewish Hospital. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Kathy. Congratulations. Uh, we want to also recognize servant leadership. That's the for the work in racial justice. We have co-recipients for that. And Dr. Wade Rowett, is, here he comes, is going to come present this one for us. Hello. 
unless you're blind, you know I'm not Jason Cosby. <laughs> but what you probably don't know is I've known him since before he was born. And he introduced me down at Empower West uh, back in the spring where I was speaking and confessed to something he doesn't use. His middle name is Wade. And it is because his father was one of my students and we had a rather meaningful pastoral care encounter uh, over the years. So it, it's a unique privilege to represent Jason Wade Cosby. Uh, servant leadership is being uh, given to co-recipients, Reverend uh, Dr. Kevin Cosby and Reverend Joe uh, Phelps, and they have worked together on the Empower West project, and that has been a project very dear to our hearts and uh, to Baptist uh, Seminary of Kentucky. Uh, in, in order to uh, promote education and racial justice, Dr. Cosby came to us and said, we would like to have an MDiv in the West End of Louisville. And Joe Phelps invited our faculty into his church and we sat and talked about the possibilities. And thanks to the leadership of our current president, we now have an MDiv in the West End of Louisville and uh, I am privileged to uh, teach in that program. Uh, we received a grant and we have uh, televi televised classrooms between Georgetown and there. I teach one, one week here and the next week over there. <clears throat> and I'm fortunate uh, to have been told by some of my colleagues when they were in CPE that I'm not black. <laughs> and that I might think I understand a little more than I do. It's been a, it's been a trip in humility and I'm fortunate to have my co-teacher who teaches a couple of classes with me and will be teaching again, uh, Dr. D'Artagna Hill uh, here. And uh, it's a privilege to co-teach and be, uh, be a part of that. And it's a privilege to call attention to the leadership that, that they have done. The Angela Project, which they are supporting, uh, calls attention to this being the 400th year of slavery uh, in, in the United uh, States. And uh, I... I think the, be the best thing I could say that these two are doing for our pastoral care community is helping us to see our many blind spots and for many of us, our, our white privilege in a way that calls us to more humility when we are trying to minister across cultural lines. So it, it's a privilege to recognize uh, both of these uh, distinguished leaders. Thank you. Thank you. I want to also welcome now Chaplain Jackie Ward, Director of Pastoral Care here at Baptist East Hospital. He will present the award to this year's Outstanding Facilitator. Thank you. Yes. I get to honor Reverend Dr. R. Dale McAbee. He is one of our chaplains here at Baptist Health. He has been a part of our organization. He has celebrated his 25th year with us uh, this year and was awarded at our awards banquet this year. Dale has been here from 1994 to 1998, and Dale has worked uh, with, in rehab with rehab patients, psychiatric patients, and presently he is working with the, our oncology patients. The unique thing about Dale, and I want to share this, uh, if you know Dale, you know Dale's a singer. It is uh, always a privilege to and an honor to be visiting a patient, and the patient would say to me, well, the chaplain that came by and saw me, he sang to me. And they look at me with expectation. <laughs> I always tell them, if you want to get out of the hospital sooner, you do not want me to sing to you. <laughs> Dale has served in, as a pastoral counselor with the Association of Clinical Pastoral Education. He also serves as facilitator of the Sacred Vocation Program that we have started here at our hospital. For the last nine years, he has been the choir master at Concordia Lutheran Church, and he is a native of Spartanburg, South Carolina. Dale earned his BA uh, in music from Furman, his Master of Divinity uh, of Pastoral Care and Counseling at Southern Seminary, and his Doctor of Ministry degree at Columbia Seminary. In the spring of 2009, in the summer of 2000. Uh, 17, he served as an adjunct professor at St. Uh, Minoret Seminary. Unfortunately, uh, Dale is not here tonight. 
Uh, he is facilitating a different kind of learning at this hour. He is conducting a wedding rehearsal for one of our Baptist Health Behavioral Health Therapists whose wedding he is officiating this coming Sunday. So Dale has asked me to say a few words for him. He has given me his notes uh, of appreciation uh, for this evening. So please let me read his words to you. I am deeply appreciative of being recognized as a facilitator of the Oates Institute Online Learning. In 1996, I first presented an online seminary, seminar on the spiritual care of the psychiatric patient. It was in that paper that I first formulated my thoughts in, on methodology on how to do pastoral and spiritual care with those who are suffering with mental illness and developmental uh, neglect and trauma or addiction. Helping people connect with their SGTO, something greater than oneself. Becoming a recurring pastoral strategy. And I have had the opportunity to share my thoughts about how to experience what Oates called trilogue, the form of pastoral counseling described as conversation between the person being counseled, the counselor, and the Holy Spirit. Learning to, oper oper excuse me, to operationalize that concept is an ongoing learning. Dale says, I first met Dr. Oates in person in 1985 when he gathered a group of us first-year seminary students who had graduated from Furman. He helped us process our grief over a beloved pastor who was fired from his position over boundary violations. Oates tended to our grief and anger and then reminded us that we all needed support and accountability if we were going to work as people who offer soul care. But my first awareness of Wayne Oates came from the Furman chaplains and the re religion professors. Many of them knew Oates personally, and some had trained with him. I read his book, Struggle to be Free, mm -hmm. and found a kindred spirit whose life experiences matched up with mine. Born in a rural community of Greenville, South Carolina, Wayne Oates grew up in poverty. So did I in the next county over. Abandoned by his father, he began working along his alongside his mother at a cotton mill at a young age. My alcoholic father was never a part of my life. In the struggle to be free, Dr. Oates reflects on his struggle to be free, to decide his own destiny, to choose his own direction, to express his own thoughts, to work in his own way, and to put into action what he perceived as God's destiny for him. At the same time, he leads readers to understand the spiritual dimensions of their own lives so they might set themselves free from poverty, feelings of inferiority, inferiority, regimental, regimenting life, loneliness, helplessness, and the compulsiveness of work. At 14, Wayne was rec recognized as an exceptional and was chosen to serve as a page in the United States Senate. He would go on to pursue much more education. He was a graduate from Mars Hill Junior College, Wake Forest University, and received his PhD in psychology and religion at Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. He served as a pastor in churches and in North Carolina, Kentucky, in North Carolina and Kentucky. In 1974, Oates joins the faculty of the University of Louisville Medical Center Combining his knowledge of theology and behavioral science, he role at the school helped medical students learn how to incorporate the spiritual needs of their patients in clinical settings. Noted for his great compassion and to ability to emphasize, Wayne Oates mentored and encouraged numerous people in healing positions. In 1984, the American Psychiatric Association honored him with the Oscar Fisker Award. While I never had a class with Oates, I know so many people who loved him and studied with him that it feels to me like I do know him. The stories of the students and the numerous books he has written and the ongoing work of Wayne Oates Institute ensures that the Oates legacy and pastoral care and theology will remain vibrant. From Dale, 
I appreciate all he does, and I know that he thanks you so much for this wonderful honor. Um, our second uh, recipient is also not here. She's in Dallas, Texas. Uh, her name is Tris Matthews, Chaplain Tris Mas Matthews, and she's been facilitating um, for Oates uh, seminars for many years. Um, and we recorded her last night, but it didn't turn out very well. So rather than fighting with that, I'm just going to read her acceptance to you, um, uh, just as we have had done for Dale. Uh, so this is Trish Matthews. Thank you so very much for this honor. I began my experience with the Oates Institute when Chris Hammond was the director. My hospital system director at the time signed up a, our whole department. And for me, it stuck. I took several of the initial classes that looked at spirituality in film and found them inspiring and a lot of fun. I ventured out to take some other classes after that, and what I always enjoyed most was the sharing that took place. Um, ministers often fear that degree of vulnerability, and I think the online model allows people to express their true selves and find support as they try out new truths. Each class has goals, but they are really a jumping off place for wherever the conversation leads. I was able to help with the Oates booth at one of the Association of Professional Chaplains conferences with Chris, and I met Rick at a conference several years ago. After some years of participating in classes, I began facilitating and teaching, doing such topics as the Wayne Oates book, When Religion Gets Sick, to uh, other uh, Bernay Brown and Barbara Brown Taylor books and chaplaincy topics. I also participated in the planning group for several years, discerning what topics were important for chaplains to discuss and learn. I continue to be a participant in some other classes as well, this summer taking the LGBTQ class and the palliative care class. I'm so grateful for all of these experiences and appreciate being honored in this way. Thank you again, and here's to many more years of online learning. Uh, Trish Matthews, let's give her a hand. Our next presenter apparently is very familiar to you all, but I know his wife and have for more than 40 years because uh, she's my dermatologist from the time I was like a little bitty teenager. Um, but she's, a da doc that's Dr. Yeskin, I'm sure you all know her. I was heartbroken when she retired. Uh, but uh, her husband, very familiar to you all in the Oates Institute, is Dr. Ted Hodge, and he is the past, a past award recipient and also a board member, and will also now introduce and present the Outstanding APCE Educator Award. I was a director of pastoral care here for, well, ever since the hospital actually opened back in 1975 and a few years before that. But as the director of pastoral care, I made several different hires over the years, but one of them particularly was Frank Wogan. I hired him in 1999. Not only did I get a top-notch chaplain with a PhD to boot, to boot, but he turned out to be an incredible colleague and friend. And on top of that, he could play the guitar. <laughs> and uh, as was mentioned about Dale, there were a number of instances where he would be with a dying patient and would play his guitar and uh, also helped with services right here in this uh, auditorium. Uh, he came to us from Norton Hospital. Uh, we were delighted to uh, take him away. But, you know, I, I, uh, one of the other things that about um, Frank, even with that PhD, that wasn't enough. He decided to climb another mountain, and uh, he ended up becoming an ACPE supervisor, educator, and that's why we're recognizing him tonight. Um, but, when, but I knew that there was no way that we could keep him once he became a supervisor, uh, that there was more that he wanted to do, and um, he needed a bigger challenge. And so he took a job at University Hospital as uh, the director, or actually he worked there as a chaplain and then became director. And uh, I, uh, I have teased him on quite a few occasions of how upset I was with him for leaving us here. And yet, I really was relieved, to be honest with you. 
and in this sense, because I knew that he would need a bigger challenge and, and it would probably take him away from Louisville. But going down to university, I knew he would remain here and uh, we could continue our friendship. And so I'm really grateful for that. Uh, and, and there at university, he did get those opportunities and has had those opportunities. Uh, he is part of an NIH grant that uh, it was represented uh, with people uh, doing training in end of life care and uh, including uh, medical students, uh, nursing students, social work students, and chaplain residents. And uh, they have been recognized and I think uh, Frank has also had to go to other hospitals where they want to continue this kind of education. And uh, so if that wasn't enough, um, I could add a lot more tonight, but all of these things that I've mentioned, I think, uh, point to the fact that this is the reason that we can recognize him tonight as the outsti outstanding supervisor educator uh, for the Wayne Oates Institute. And so I proudly present my colleague and friend, Frank Wogan. Well, th <clears throat> thank you for the recognition and the gracious introduction, and thank you to all of you for being here and not at Carmichael's bookstore listening to Barbara Brown Taylor. <laughs> you probably wouldn't fit in there anywhere. I thought Dale would be there for sure because she was on his dissertation committee, so I'm glad to hear that he actually has a good reason not to be here. Um, uh, I came to this country and to Louisville um, to take a few classes with Wayne Oates after I finished my seminary studies in Germany and to take a unit of CPE. And uh, in January of 1989, I would not have dreamt that uh, that move would lead to a couple of graduate degrees and a marriage and a family and a career as a hospital chaplain and ACPE supervisor and many friends and many of you are in the room here but um, that's how it goes with the best laid plans. Um, by the way the journey for Kelly and myself began in one of Wayne Oates's classes. Pastoral care and human crisis we took it together but that's her story to tell and not mine. Um, <laughs> When Philip Garrett called me, or texted me, I think, as a representative of the board and told me about this event and asked me if I could be here and would accept the recognition, I uh, waited till Kelly came home. And when she came home, I said, I'm officially old, <laughs> or they ran out of names. <laughs> um, and she disputed that, especially the age thing because, and she had to because she was honored last year and so I don't think she wanted to have that connected to, to age. But I made the age reference because it seemed like I've been coming to these events for so long. First time in 1989 when Clarence Barton was recognized and I came because I just had signed up to take a unit, my first unit of CPE with him and I'd heard so many stories about this guy, so I wanted to uh, check him out. Um, it's not about, when I step back, it's not about age um, or honor, I think what this evening is about, but it's about community. And that's very appropriate because what we do is we offer uh, relationships for those who are hurting, uh, and for those who want to grow, and I don't think we can do it by ourselves. We need community, and I'm profoundly grateful for the community that is represented here. Today I'm really glad that I'm honored with Kathy Lesh. We work together at Jewish Hospital and Kentucky One Health, and we probably will work again <laughs> together when we become U of L Health next Friday. <laughs> who knows? But uh, there are many that I've worked with, the Norton, 
team, our team at uh, university, Wade Road is there, he's one of my teachers, Isaac Jiguna, trained me, hired me, and I'm profoundly grateful for that move. So thank you for the recognition tonight. Thank you for this community. Glad to be here. Thanks. Thank you.